Ananim, Habuz Lige Yoinim. Dear friends, let's take some to Docker and express our heartfelt prayer to Akadosh Baruch Hu. The Bonne Shalom. Enough suffering. Take us out of Golos. Take us out of this exile, wherever it is in Israel. Hostages all over the world. We see the hatred which is, has exploded around the world. It's beyond any imagination, and we rarely see it. I'm Levada Yishkod. We are certainly alone, but we're not loners. Why? We have you. We have you, God. So please, God, show the world. And you've been showing the world that you're with us. But let them realize it already. As we say in Yiddish, enough. So what are we going to do? We'll learn some more Torah. So my friends, let me share with you a little part of Torah. This Shabbos, first Shabbos after Pesach, Custom has it, most of the communities, that between Shabbos of, between Pesach and Shavuos, every Shabbos we study one chapter of Birki Avot, of the ethics of the fathers. There are six chapters, and this prepares us to the coming of the Yom Tev Shavuos, the receiving of the Torah. This past Shabbos, we started with the first one, obviously. The first Mishnah, after reading the introductory one, we say, Moshe Kibbel Torah from Sinai. Moshe Rabbeinu received the Torah from Sinai. Um Mesorah le Yeshua. And has given it over, has transmitted it to Yeshua. Yeshua who was his student, who was with him 24-7. Didn't move away from Moshe Rabbeinu. And then Yeshua, after he took over the leadership, Misora Lezikanim. We Yeshua Lezikanim. And Yeshua gave it to Zikanim. Yeshua gave it over to the elders. And he's not one of the elders, he's one of the youngest, but he's definitely received the Torah. And the Zikanim, the elders, have given it over to the Nevim, to the prophets. Nevim and the prophets, Misoru and Anchi Knesses Agdoila, have transmitted it to the members of the Great Assembly. Now, this mission deserves a lot of attention. And I'm sure that my kinderloch over here, they learned the Mishnah and they know the Mishnah. But right now, my friends, after introducing you, Sama Mazisa Eniklach, come Mashi, you too. And you can say hello to Zaydi's old friends. Yes, you want to come over here? Come in. Okay, so you can see everybody. Okay. Now, let us continue, my dear friends. Now that you see my Floridian Eniklach, let us continue with learning the Mishnah. So the Mishnah says as following. The Mishnah says as following. Moshe Rabbeinu received the Torah from Sinai or on Sinai? Levi, did they receive the Torah on Sinai? So why, why does the Mishnah say Misinai? How should the Mishnah say? Besinai, on Sinai. Al Sinai, on the mountain of Sinai, right? How does the Mishnah have to say? Al Sinai, right? So why does the Mishnah say, Mi Sinai, from Sinai? So the Rebbe points out there is a message that we have to learn from the mountain of Sinai. When God came to give the Ten Commandments, give the Torah, He was looking for an appropriate mountain. Now all the mountains came to present their particularity. This one said, I'm the tallest. This one said, I'm the most beautiful. This one said, I am the most powerful. I'm the most rocky. I get the most tourist. One little mountain, Sinai, in the middle of the desert. A little nobody. No tourism going on on Mount Sinai. And it said, who am I? I'm definitely not worthy. The moment it said, I'm not worthy, said God, you're the one who is worthy. Because God was looking to give the Torah on someone who feels humble. So that's why he gave it on Sinai. But then the question is, if you want to give it something that's humble, why don't you give it in a valley? Something which is deep, which is definitely humble. Don't go for a mountain. But that's the point. Are we proud to have the Torah, Kinderlach? Yeah. yeah. Are we committed to do the Torah? Yeah. yeah. With all our strength? Yeah. Let me see, how are you going to do it? Like this? Yeah. Yeah. So, Miss Sinai, the mountain represents 
we're doing the Torah with full conviction, as a mountain, proud, standing up for our rights, standing up for our belief in Torah. But at the same time, we are also humble. We recognize it's not ours, it's God's. That's what we learn from Sinai. Strength, conviction, perseverance, but humility. Just like Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu says, was the leader par excellence. Was the greatest leader ever existed and will ever exist. But at the same time, says the Torah, he was the most humble individual. Why? Because he knew that's coming from God. There is one who is going to be even greater than Moshe Rabbeinu. And who is the one who is going to be greater than Moshe Rabbeinu? Mashiach. He's going to have that quality of ultimate leadership and ultimate humility. So please, God, we want to see him already now. We want Mashiach now.